our next match, uh, we have on the left, Tom de Waal, on the right, uh, the hooded man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Johan really doesn't want to be on camera. So we are having an interesting matchup here uh, of, on Tom's side, uh, Black White Gary. Uh, Gary being Grey Merchant of Asphodel, uh, the return of the menace uh, at Uncommon, luckily this time, uh, versus on Johan's side, very interestingly, Blue White Mill. So, interesting matchup. Uh, Niels has exited that list if we would like to show them to you. Um, but this is an interesting matchup because Johan is going to try and mill Tom out as quickly as possible, but Tom has a lot of hand attack. Uh, so, Johan will not have the usual amount of mill speed or mill cards to play. So, in my experience, in my testing, in my uh, analysis, what Johan really needs to win this match is a repeatable source of mill advantage, like his Ashiox, for example. The uncommon Ashiok, of course. Uh, while Tom on his side just wants to play out his um, cheap hand attack creatures that stick around. Uh, they won't attack because Johan has a lot of walls, but they'll stick around for huge carry turns. And here we see immediately, as said, uh, the burglar rat coming down for Tom. Gary's in the house. <laughs> we have uh, people happy about this. DBMP. Tom, Tom, Tom. Gary, Gary, Gary. Go, Tom. Uh, there we go. Hope the rest. A second mill wall. This time milling for four. Let me. Wall of lost thoughts for a Johan. Uh, and he keeps the pressure up now. A secret keeper as well. So, putting quite a bit of milling pressure onto Tom. Oh, and there's a Davriel putting more pressure on Johan's hand. As I said, this will take him down a notch in how far he can mill. Oh, DBMP, we have a new subscriber with Twitch Prime. Thank you very much. Uh, join the Longhouse. There will be a seat for you by the fire and a place to rest your axe. For those of you that don't know, uh, subscribing is the uh, the actual heart support for this stream. Uh, and you can even do it for free if you never had a Amazon Prime account. You can get a trial account. I think there's a little button on the right in the screen, the blue crown that you see that has some explanation Ooh. how you can do that. In the meantime, though... That was an interesting card we just saw flash in Johan's hand. Uh, it is his Flood of Tears. Flood of Tears. Ooh, juicy. Mm -hmm. I hadn't seen that one yet. No, it, well, it's in the list, let me tell you. Um, <laughs> but this is this game has gone exactly as I said. Uh, Tom attacked Johan's hand. Johan is basically out of uh, milling speed here and is now living off the top of his library. Tom is building up uh, his board to get some damage through once he has more creatures than Johanna's walls to finish off with the Gary. And there's the number one. Grey Merchant of Asphodel hitting for seven life. Johan down to eight. Six, I mean, apparently. Yeah, you there's Tassa Deep Dwelling. Wow, this. Both players are really popping off haymakering yep. into each other the fun thing is as well <laughs> they're ignoring each other's yep. win conditions yeah, completely <laughs> completely um, it's like you Johan, do your thing i'll do my thing this is an interesting aspect johan chose to blink the overwhelmed apprentice rather than the wall of thoughts yeah. to set up his next draws and i think there's a time wipe in his hand there oh that would be big well not huge because he loses the creatures to mill with tassa uh, to blink with tassa <laughs> oh no, there's a lot of people exclaiming <laughs> Abu because of the new art. <laughs> uh, yeah, fair. Um, and what was the actual kill now? I'm assuming Tom just played a second Grey Merchant, but I missed it as well. <laughs> so, 
You've seen the first match. <laughs> You've witnessed the agonizing, slow decline of what was formerly known as Kubu. And now <laughs> we are in the Haymaker match. The yep. chopper. This yep. is Sparta. This is Sparta. Exactly. You just throw your win conditions at each other and see who gets there first. And as I said, it's likely that's going to be Tom because of the roadblocks he puts on... Uh, Johan's plan, whereas Johan doesn't really do the same. Sure, Tom doesn't get to get in with his 1-1s, one but he doesn't need to when Johan doesn't have any removal. Now, sideboarding is interesting. Yeah, I'll try to get the deck lists up. In the meantime, I'll talk about them because I have them as well. Johan has access to some interesting cards, um, but sadly, no extra removal spells for the small creatures. So, Johan can bring in more counter spells, more mill counter spells as well, and thought collapse, uh, but nothing crucial. So I think Johan actually stays approximately the same. Tom, on the other hand, is over here. Tom gets to take out a lot of stuff, right? Because Tom has removal spells that he does not want to have in his deck, but Tom does get to bring in the four duress. Tom does get to bring in the four never happened to make sure he hits those cards that he needs to hit. Yeah, so and here we see the decks on screen as well yeah. for you. So we have Azorius Mill versus, uh, well, blue black, it is white black Orzov uh, uh, devotion, more the black devotion with the discard engine, very reminiscent of uh, a deck that uh, Mots brought to yep. the Invitational already. Yes, Mots, uh, very well known for bringing. Uh, heavily optimized monocolor decks yeah. to take advantage of the fact that mana bases uh, in Gentry really cause this big delay almost in, in how you play compared to most other formats. Um, Tom here doesn't go for that approach, uh, uh, added white to what is essentially a black devotion deck. Yep. Uh, for that higher flexibility, for better removal, for I think that's banishing light as well. Uh, no, that is a flicker of fate. Up ah, top. that's the flickers on top. Yeah, yep. the screen's very very small for us. Uh, well, you have it here in better quality if you want it. Um, so yeah. there's better removal, uh, some better discard. The Basilica Bell. Basilica Bell is amazing. Yeah, but with how he distributed his mana, well, no, actually he it's has fine. the eight. He duels. has eight tap lands. Uh, mm -hmm. and six white sources in there. Um, the Yarox Fenlurkers uh, are both a uh, supporting in the discard theme and of course two black mana. So that's um, uh, uh, yeah the devotion yeah. support there. That's the engine. Uh, and we see the one of Soul Salvage there uh, against very grindy matchups where you can just mm -hmm. replay and recast everything. Yep. I'd be interested to talk to Tom about this deck because I've worked on a monoblack mono black devotion build as well. I also decided to splash a color, but I never considered white. Uh, for me, I went to put to the black splash for Teferi's Time Twist. The black and sideboard, splash for uh, The Teferi. blue splash, I mean, of course. The blue splash for Teferi's Time Twist and the sideboard counter spells. Um, so I'm interested to talk, have a talk with Tom about uh, his choice for playing this deck, or these colors specifically. And in the meantime, sideboarding seems to be done. So. Let's get ready to get into the match. Uh, Incoming awesome transition. <laughs> there we go. And we see the the hooded man facing off against uh, what is probably at this point one of the most beloved deck builders yep. uh, in the game. For uh, sure. Known for always bringing something new, something fancy to uh, especially the Bredene leaderboard. Uh, really doesn't want to settle for what the community, uh, and that's with very big air quotes, thinks is uh, the best deck, again, <laughs> air quotes. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's always nice to see what he brings to the table, what he uh, has dreamt up. That's true. Uh, he also worked together with uh, Emma for her deck. Oh, okay. Uh, cool. Which which will, is also amazing. Yes, which will also turn some heads, uh, I and think. We're no longer seeing it, but Tom seems to have gotten a haircut and looking sharp. Hands looking sharp. <laughs> yeah, his werewolf look is a bit uh, in the past. <laughs> All right. What is the best deck? 
what is the best deck? Uh, well, at some point, the consensus was that that was Gates. I mean, um, it was. <laughs> yeah, that's why we uh, had to rarify some of their key cards. Um, at this point, the best deck is probably uh, Elementals. In a vacuum, it has to be. Yeah, in a vacuum, it's the best deck. Yep. Uh, the reason why it's not oppressive is because the second best deck has such a good game against it in uh, the different variants of food decks. Yep. And then comes oh. a very broad tier of decks that aim to prey on the this rock, paper, scissor yep. system in a way, uh, which is extremely I'm, broad as you'll see in this event actually. i'm pretty sure uh, i'm i'm convinced uh, in fact that uh, the only reason why right now elementals is is well elementals and food are the top two decks is only because the other decks that can tussle with them already aren't yet as refined as those two decks are because those two decks got almost nothing from the new set or needed to include almost nothing from the new set um <laughs> Miss Viking is like, what? How do you mean it's game two already? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Simic Flash, Seiwu is. Yep. Uh, Simic Flash is a very good tier two contender that once refined will absolutely be good against those decks. In the meantime, Basilica Bellhaunt gets didn't say pleased. Tom gets to mill three cards and doesn't get to discard cards from Johan's hand. And this this game is starting off better than Johan, right? He has a, he has a two three, meaning that any of his next walls will mill even more. And Tom hasn't been able to attack his hand as much. Right? Johan is still at four or five cards in hand. Uh, in the meantime, uh, the meta game analysis has started. Simic Flash is bad against uh, elementals. Uh, that is somewhat true, but it preys on uh, food decks. So that's where it is strong. And the Azorius Flash staggering inside deck is somewhere hovering there as yep. well. Uh, with it having a decent elementals matchup because of the lifelink. Um, so, and there's the, the Ashiok. The meta game right now is extremely interesting. Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, there's an article uh, ready to get posted sometime soon uh, where I analyze some of the new decks uh, using white in the meta. Uh, and I'm convinced that all of those decks. And that is just decks playing white. All of those decks are tier two and can tussle with the best of them. So uh, yeah, very open, very wide meta. Uh, it's been a long time since we've had this diverse and this many viable strategies. It's almost like, I don't know, Gates of Blaze was pushing a lot of stuff out of the format. I don't know. <laughs> and I mean, I'm definitely to blame for that as well because I was playing that card way too much. <laughs> What am I going to post my Azorius Flash decklist? Uh, that's also in the pipeline. It's uh, it's the article is almost ready, uh, but I'm trying a new format that uh, includes some video at the end of the uh, article to give you some gameplay as well that I need to edit. So I hope I'll be releasing uh, both the articles we just talked about this week still. Okay, Merfolk Secret Keeper. Tom Nils for, which is fine. Merfolk Secret Creeper enters the battlefield. Tom mills more. And Ashiok mills more and exiles. But that was a lot of cards, no Grey Merchants, so Tom is more and more likely to draw them. Yep. But this game, definitely more on Johan's side. Tom didn't get all that, all that much discard in. Johan did get to resolve. <laughs> my, people and Ashiok, want my so. petitioner's deck yep, list. There we go. Tom wow, scoops okay. him up. Not so fast, dude. We're going to game three already. Realizing he does not get there. We're getting uh, <laughs> served dessert and drinks here. Uh, it's a uh, good, good hovering in the <coughs> good hovering in the uh, in in this abode. Yes. All right. So Selesnia and Shamans is absolutely very strong. Uh, if very unrefined because we've seen two very different deck, deck lists recently at uh, who will be playing later in the event uh, one of his lists that he submitted or that he had ready for this event was as well green white auras but in a completely different way to how ian played it last week on the competitive leaderboard and yes i will that was yana coming in to bring us a awesome delicious red beet infused cake mm. and normal cake and some weird stuff in the middle yeah i don't know what this is I think it's uh, creepier. No. Yeah. 
Oots. Logo Johan Mill is bonkers. Well. Look at the cake. There's red beets inside. This cake doesn't. <laughs> awesome. It's really good. I hope you guys downstairs are having some as well. <laughs> Every time I move the the camera, it resets chat, the chat chats. Disappears, yeah, yeah. But that's good. Then they feel like they obligated to spam it. Yes. Again. Last time that happened, Boyan, uh, well, Slacker literally said like, "Uh, oh, fill up the chat, spam, <laughs> blah 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 blah." Oh, we hit fifty viewers. Okay. Oy. So the record for the record um, for this event is sixty three viewers. Mm -hmm. The record for this stream for the invitational. No. For the Invitational, it's well, well, What is the Gentry Open record? Because your stream record isn't fair because that was Nationals. Yeah. The Gentry <laughs> Open never hit 50. Okay. Invitational is the highest watched Interesting. event in this thing. And Nationals, yes, hit 104. I so know. I was there. If we break 63, um, we have the next most successful watched Invitational. Uh, if we break 104, <laughs> which... That would be crazy. I mean, I don't know who you, who you bribed to get away with that. Um, then we have the most successful I mean, stream ever on this channel. Give me 15 minutes and I'll buy you 1,000 viewers. <laughs> no. Or um, the, the cake is a lie. How can the cake be a lie? We showed you the cake. It is lit. Oh, yeah. there's no. I was going to show you, but there's no camera anymore. But it is... I mean, we could just uh, embed the stream. Embed the cake. No. We could embed the stream on... Uh, Magic Arena. Yes. Any, curse. curse uh, on, on literally every single what's his side, just like they do. And then we have a thousand plus viewers. Yeah, Can exactly. Open never hits 50 viewers because yeah. every viewer is there. Yeah, that's, that's kind of how it works. But the Gentry Open footage probably gets rewatched. But the open footage doesn't get rewatched as much as the invitational footage because the open footage is um, the end of the meta game. Right, There's fair. There's a new set that comes out straight after that. Fair. Yeah, the open is more about the playing than the streaming. Okay, and Tom again, no turn to discard, so a slower start than he'd like to be having. What's the, the Dryad's name? Dryad of... Uh, Lampad of Death Vigil. Dryads oh, are green. Yeah. I'm like 70% sure it's Lampad of Death Vigil. Yeah, look at me knowing cards. <laughs> no, but it's interesting because Dryads are green, Lampads are black, uh, Nyads are blue, yeah. Oriads are white, and no, all seeds are white. All seeds are white and Oriads are red, right? Yeah. There's Davriel though. Davriel is huge. Davriel allows Tom to start attacking you on his hand. It's funny how both of these, like, whether or not their game plan has the long term effectiveness, decides on, hey, did you get your planeswalker? Yeah. <laughs> Very true. Uh, apprentice, and then. Yeah, this is this is probably as far away of a matchup from the last match as you can get. Uh, this is two players just doing their thing, recognizing when they won or when they lost. Okay, Johan is going to be sending the secret keeper on an adventure. Have we seen why Johan is playing white yet? Sectorate. What? You've typed Sectret. Ah. Um, no, we've not seen anything in play. Um, but we do know that it's to have access to uh, interesting sideboard cards and revoke existence. Um, but also for the main deck, uh, Elite Guard Mages and oh, right. Time Wipe. And, and, and Shadow the Sky. Okay, so there's a Yara. Ooh. That's becoming a good setup for a Grey Merchant, that's for sure. And Davriel, make your opponent discard a card. Johan needs to decide what he can get rid of. It's very surprising to me that he decided to keep in the Runaway Togethers. Uh, when I was checking out the sideboards after testing uh, two games each, 
I really didn't think Runaway Together was something that stays in because it costs two mana. You don't want any expensive cards because you... Because you, um... You kind of want to discard the lands against the discard effect. And run away together... I mean, what are you going to run away together on Tom's side? Something that makes you discard? That seems horrible. The Dryad. Yeah, you could hit the Dryad. But That's the you know. only target that doesn't hurt you. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't think run away together should stay in post sideboard. I mean, I love run away together. Don't get me wrong. I think run away together is great for this deck. Uh, just this is not a matchup where I'd want it. Yeah, oh yes, run away together, together with Gary. Run away together with Gary. Oh, <laughs> uh, where are the times in the when Gary was uh, in Gentry last time when it was still league standard, and we were having a dead Gary in the graveyard, playing a Gary, and returning to the underworld, sacking one Gary to bring back both Garys for dozens of triggers, and oh, that was great timing. Yeah, my version does that with Blood for Bones now. Yeah. Duress. In response. Unsummon. Hit the Ayara. That's a good plan. In response to that. Ayara, sack the lamp pad. Draw a card. Draw a card. Then the Duress resolves and Tom gets to take the Ashiok away. Which is huge, of course. So one card left in hand, Davriel goes down, Johan no hand, and there's Ayara. Back into the fray. So Tom looking but good how, here. How did he get the Ashiok off the table? It wasn't on the table. It was a duress. Ah, the duress. He took yeah, it with yeah. a duress. Uh, ah, because Johan was uh, stuck on lands and didn't have three on turn three. Exactly. So Johan here has the fourth land off the top. So that's good. Now he can cast most of his cards that he's drawing. So he but passes. Where's his hand? He doesn't have anyone anymore. Tom duressed and then uh, oh, made him discard his last his cards. Hand. Yep. Yeah. And there's Real Merchant for five. And passing the turn to Yuan. Yuan finds an unsummon. That's four more mills. <laughs> Gary count number four. <laughs> There's F's in the chat. F's in the chat, everybody. Yep. And he decided to go for the Underworld Apprentice. I really love the rare that oh, yeah, just yeah. got milled on. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. If he if we'd have drawn that, the game would have been over. Especially with the sack out already in play. Um but Johan, again, uh being being diligent in bouncing his O2 to set up his future draws. Tom finding a little bit much land here, uh, escaping the Woe Strider, and Tom's Graver is pretty sizable already. So do note that Johan doesn't need all that much mill effect anymore. So you can see the Graveyard is about the size of the library now, so we're getting there. But the Woe Strider comes in, drains again with Ayara, gives it gives uh, something that Tom can sacrifice and just bring back next turn. So it's an interesting position we're in here. And swinging in now. With both, since if Johan wants to block both of them, he would need to sacrifice his apprentice, which makes his bounce effects weaker. So Johan just says, okay, I'm fine with it. I go now to 11. And Johan is not dead to a gray merchant, but just about. Johan finds another land. We have uh, Johan's fan uh, team waking yep. up, Bundy. <laughs> but there's another blocker now that helps him. Now he has enough O4s. You just have to start jumping the Woe Strider. Yeah, Woe Strider's a 5 4. Yep. At this I point. do want to check something. Does Tom have access to Omen of the Dead? What happened? Oh, final payments, Tom pays life, kills the blocker. Yep, that's rough. Tom does not have access to Omen of the Dead. So Tom cannot bring back anything that he sacrifices or that gets milled. No, which I find surprising. In yep, the same. Black Devotion deck. Same here. Uh, but maybe so, it's more a mono-black devotion. Yep. Oh. And there's the Gary, and that's the kill. And That'll do it. Handshake, wow. All right. So that's <laughs> the end of uh, match number two. It can be this fast yep. as well. It's... I mean, it's still an interesting match 
from a gameplay from a, a, a matchup perspective uh the gameplay itself less so because the players aren't really interacting right it's it's yeah it's not the most captivating no it's not the most captivating but it's in, it's place. interesting to talk about because of of of, of the implication and, and the it's interesting to spectate because you can easily assess where the match is at any given point yeah and the, the advantage bar is yeah. uh, is pretty clear there there's exactly. no guessing is the life total relevant yet it's, it's only relevant on one side <laughs> Uh, exactly it's just how things are in this match. Uh, we have Johan coming in uh, for our uh, post-match interview. Yep. Uh, mirror, mirror on the wall. Which stream setup is being used? Uh, this. Ooh, um, there's actually a picture of the stream setup uh, on Facebook right now. Uh, there's a small hand cam overhead, uh, which honestly I'm not too happy about. I'm thinking about upgrading that into a 4K Brio webcam. Uh, and then the side views uh, could all be Logitech C920s. Uh, the lighting is uh, LEDs. Uh, that I bought and the face cam here is just a, uh, a Logitech cam as well. In the meantime, we have Johan here. Uh, sorry, you'll have to be on camera at least once. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's okay. It's yeah, okay. Um, the, your match took uh, about a, f a, f a seventh of the previous <laughs> match. Uh, yeah. Well, it's not an ideal matchup for my deck, I think, because I do not interact with any of his permanents uh, that way. And also, yeah, two times having the mana hiccup was just too much. Yeah. Just not putting down the Asher on turn three was just so painful. too much. Yeah, we, yeah. we noticed that very, very strongly <laughs> yeah. uh, here as well. Um, so uh, let's have a quick look at your deck first. Uh, we have your deck list here. Let's make yours a bit bigger because we don't care about Tom anymore for a minute. Uh, raw, raw. There we go. So this is your deck list. Yeah. Um, one of the notable things I I don't see is Banishing Light, which is an awesome uh, white card. Of course, you're uh, restricted on how many uncommons you get to use in a deck like this. Um, is that something you wanted to try and fit in or? No, I actually really wanted the Overwhelmed Apprentices seeing that I've seen this deck in the last uh, uh, last set. Yeah. But now with Thassa, I went for a more creature because otherwise you could go for like Witching Well on the turn one. But with Thassa, I wanted the Overwhelmed Apprentice for the extra scry, the extra mill in this case. Yeah. Elite Guard Mage for a little bit of life gain and draw and board sweeps, but... Yeah. So, is there anything that you would change in your deck uh, after this match? Lands that come untapped. Lands that come untapped. Yeah. How many comes into play tapped lands are Eight. you playing? And two of mystics or yeah pseudo. Yeah. So yeah. All right. Um, is there anything else you would like to add to the end of this interview? I'm sorry, people at home that were rooting for <laughs> Mill. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, there, there's <laughs> definitely a bunch of people that are very excited about seeing Mildex uh, in in Gentry. Uh, it's always this, just just barely not good enough. It has the potential. Seems. It has potential. I mean, the the board sweep does not solve the the Tassa problem, which gives you like if you have the board sweep, you can keep like one good creature, like an overwhelmed apprentice, and just fire it right back up. Uh, it has its it, it's it's good matchups and it's bad matchups. The fact that I didn't get a board sweep against this devotion deck, uh, the yeah. time wipe was was gone because I couldn't cast it. Obviously, flood of tears as well. It's not an ideal matchup to have to discard your hand. If it's a more creature heavy matchup that go, tries to attack, then it's 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 easier. I think this was a pretty hard matchup for me. Yeah, there's a. Uh, in general, in the bracket, there's some uh, awkward matchups that came out. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was really nice to see you. Thank you yeah. very much for being thank here. Thank you for having me, uh, both of you. Both of you. Thank you for having me. Uh, I hope you're. I always around. have fun. Uh, yeah, I'll stay around for a little while. I'm always happy to show off some brews. I love right. brewing. It's the most fun about gentry. That's true. Thank you. Thank you very much, Johan. No problem.